Good morning, Stage 5 electronics students. Um, hopefully, you guys have all had a great break, break Sorry, um, and are ready to get back into Term 2 and continue working on um, our um, speaker project with the issues that have been um, you know, occurring over the last month or so, not being able to come to school. It's safe to assume that there's going to be some changes to the way that this project is run. So uh, as you be aware or as you'll be made aware in the next few lessons, the um, the impetus of this project is going to change from being an electronics project to more of a theoretical project just because we're not going to be able as a school to start doing PRAC um, probably for the next you know, seven weeks or so. So um, I'll go through that in more detail tomorrow during our face-to-face -face Zoom meeting. But what I want to do today is to um, create a tutorial that continues from the last tutorial that you were given in week 10 last term. And I've got that up on the screen right now for you guys. So this was on the 1st um, of April. And it was a walkthrough of the design folio. So obviously I gave you a um, example folio in PDF form. I gave you an empty folio template to work from. And I gave you a tutorial about how you can start filling in your um, folio. Um, if you look at, or if you if you have looked at that video, you will see that there's a section of the um, there's a section of the video that specifically focuses on your um, your drawing ability and implementing your CAD and things like that. Um, and that's what I really want to focus on today. So um, I'm just trying to find it in the video so that I can show you and then we'll go from there. All right, here we go. So you can see here that based on the drawings that I've produced already, okay, well, I can show you here actually. So based on the drawings that I've done, um, I then need to start, you know, showing my CAD screenshots and, you know, there's a big jump from, you know, these rendered drawings that I've done or even the design ideas that I initially came up with to this rendered drawing here, to this dimension drawing, and then all of a sudden I get to this CAD model drawing in my folio and it doesn't, well, and the tutorial doesn't really give a whole lot of focus on how we got to that point in the CAD and that's what I really wanted to do with you guys today was to go through how to come, how to produce something like this in CAD. Um, it's something that you guys are aware of now because we did spend some time working on CAD um, in term one, but more specifically, how do we take a CAD drawing and render it like this so that it looks photorealistic? And then how do we take that and or that CAD model and also turn it into these uh, engineering drawings that you can see, so this isometric drawing and this orthogonal projection, because these are things that you're going to need to put into your folio. And that's so this is the key thing that I want to go through with you today. We're going to quickly produce a very simple CAD model. Then I'm going to go through how to do a CAD render drawing with you. And then obviously I'll go through how to do it, how to do these engineering drawings with you as well. So the first thing you're going to need is your Fusion 360. Um, what I might actually do is see if I can open my CAD model. Let's see what this does. This is the wrong speaker. Just bear with me for a second, sorry. Okay, 
So if you were to look at this drawing here, or this CAD model that I've made, you can already see that it's been rendered. Okay. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to quickly just produce our own new one again. So this will also just give us a chance to brush up on our CAD skills again. So if I was to look at my, I want to use this engineering drawing that I've produced, just because it's got the dimensions there for me. Okay, so the, the key thing that I need to see is that it's got a height of 100 mil. I can work on from that. Um, and then if I want to get the, um, ultimate dimensions here. What have I got to work with? I've got 95 and it's obviously going to be 995 again. I'm not really too fussed about the dimensions right now. I may even might even just do a rectangular. So we're just going to do a very simple rectangular speaker. Oh, let's do something a bit different. Let's do this. So let's go um, 50 millimeters by 120 millimeters. So that's five centimeters by 12 centimeters. Let's go 150. So I've got this rectangle here. Okay, very basic shape to work with, but what I wanna do is I wanna extrude that now. And let's extrude it 50 again. Okay, so what I've got now is this um, rectangle here. and what I want to do really quickly is turn this into let's go 20 so what I want to give to my drawing is actually just some curved edges and again the focus of this tutorial isn't actually the CAD you guys are going to have to produce your own CAD models. I really want to focus this drawing, actually, this tutorial actually on um, the renderings and things like that. Okay, so now I'll, that's good. I want to get rid of this shape here eventually. But I also want to... 20. Good. Let's come up 20. Good. Okay. I'll get my circle tool. Okay, so what I've got are these two circles that are kind of off-center, but I want to use them so that I can do a negative extrusion for this shape. So now my speaker has this leafy shape. Now that's not an issue because I'm just, for this project, I'm just trying to create something that looks a little bit different. Now what I want to do though, I don't want to extrude it, I want to create a new sketch and I want to add to this speaker the so that's the midpoint for that still this is where the actual speaker is Control Z Now what I'm trying to do here is just try to get it to a size where it kind of fits in with the rest of the shape. So that's probably a little bit too big. That'll do. Okay. So this shape here is the shape for my speaker output. What I should actually do is get a dimension for that. So I can use it on the other side as well. So the radius of this is actually 21.957. So I'm going to quickly do on the other side now. Actually, before I do that. So 
just to be clear, 21.957, cool. I'm just going to extrude it two millimeters to give it a little bit more, you know, um, length. And I'm going to create a new sketch of this side. I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. Just take a measurement again. So I've got that exactly the same size now. All right. So this object now I've got slightly like that. And then obviously, if you were to start playing around with it, you could, you know, Add a few more designs to it, or you know, th whatever really is that you wanted to, you could do. Um, I'm just going to play around with it a little bit just so we've got something that's a little bit different. So that's at one third, 50. Let's go 50 again. All right, it will come up. Just trying to give this a rounded edge. Cool. And I'll do the same thing on this side here. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to select that. Select all of those shapes there. And I want to do a solid extrusion minus 50. And I've put a hole through that. Okay. Now let's just say I wanted to do, let's just say I wanted to round this off a little bit. So that looks a little bit more like a speaker now. There we go. All right, so this is a very basic speaker design. Again, I'm hoping that you guys, you know, really challenge yourself to produce something intricate, but for the sake of this um, tutorial, that's more than enough for us to go on for now. Okay, so this is what we've got here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this. Save, and I'm going to call it mm, Tutorial Demo Speaker. Okay, again, don't have to focus 
on any of the aesthetics right now. All we want is that basic shape for our speaker. Then if you look over here, all the drawings that we're doing are in this section called design, but we've got a few other options that we can that we can use. So the ones that are relevant to us for this project are design, render, and then drawings. So we're going to move to a render now. And this is where we start actually playing around with the aesthetics of our object, okay? So if you look up here, we've got all these different appearances that we can work with, okay, so that we can turn this very gray shape into something that has a little bit more color. So let's just say, for example, I highlighted everything and I wanted to just give this initially a, um, a very basic color. So I'm gonna just get a paint. Let's say we, we do a, a rough powder coat color. Um, let's say that I wanna make it blue. So I'm just going to, why is it not letting me download it? Okay, so what do I have access to then? Here we go. So let's just say I wanted to do a metallic blue paint. All I'm doing is I'm taking it from here and I'm going to drop it into this shape here. Okay, and once I drop it, you can see that it actually changes the um, color. You can also see that it has all these different reflections because all of a sudden, that model that you've made is starting to reflect something that actually exists in the real world. Okay, which is good. That's exactly what we want. Now, I'm just going to try to bring this back home. So you've got all these metallic finishes that you can use. Now, um, what other materials could I use? Let's see if I've got carbon fiber. See, I don't have access to that right now. Seems like we might just have access to paint. Plastic, here we go. So the other thing that I might want to do is give this kind of a um, a plastic look. Now see again, we don't have access to all of these. Yeah, these are some plastics that I can use. So let's just say I wanted to I select everything again. I want it to look like a green plastic. Now you can see that it's gotten rid of that really gloss look and it's starting to look a little bit more like a plastic now. Okay, so for now let's leave it like that. Oh maybe I want to do a matte just so that we can no, let's leave it like that. Now what we need to then realize is that once I've you know selected what I want, I can start playing around with the faces of it. So I'm just gonna highlight this face here now. And I want this to be black because this is obviously um part of the speaker. So let me find a black. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay. Let's go Control Z. Now I'm going to just select this face here. I'm going to go to Appearance. So now I'm just going to start selecting, you know, singular components to try to make it look a little bit more realistic. So, okay. That represents the the black of my object and if I did it you know now I just want to what I'm trying to do is just select that outer shell click appearance now I want it to be slightly different from the black so I'm going to go with this gray now this is really up to you from now on you start playing around with the colors as you see fit okay and if you can um if you can even download more of these um more of these textures then it gives you just you know you know more to play with for your project so let's just say i went with a, a white just to give my you know the outside of my speaker a little bit more color then all of a sudden Okay, you can see that it starts looking more realistic. Okay, now maybe let's just say I try to, I'm, what I'm trying to do is actually select the whole body of it. Okay, so I don't know what color do I want this whole because I don't like the green. Let's just say I go to yellow. 
remove. Okay, so now it's all yellow, but I'm just going to do the same thing again. I don't know if I can drag it across. No. Okay. So let me bring that white back in. So what I want you guys to do is actually start playing around with this yourself so that you can try to make your design look as realistic as possible. So again, I'm just going to select that, go to appearance, I want that to be black just because it's the outer shell of my speaker. Cancel. It's being a little bit fiddly right now. Control Z. Alright. Okay, no, that's better. Yeah, here we go. So see how it says bodies and components? That's making it hard for me just to select one thing. If I go to faces, there we go. I can start actually doing that more easily now. So I'm going to do it again on this side, just to this face here. I'm going to get this white that I had before, put it around there. And you can see that I'm actually starting to just make this really basic looking speaker look a, a lot more realistic. Okay, and they are, again, maybe you want to use two colors for your speaker. So maybe you've got a black, a yellow front, and a black back. So if I, or maybe it's, you know, a different, a different color. Okay, now you can start playing around with this rendering feature as much as you want and hopefully you'll create a design that you're happy with and that you want to produce. Okay, now once you have done or you've colored this in the way that you're happy with, okay, then you need to start thinking about how you can present this as an actual render. Okay, now that's really important. So let me just close this for now. Bring this drawing back into the middle. So it's actually got like a translucent look, which is not what I want. But that's all right, we'll leave it like that for now. Once you've done that, what you need to do is come up to where it says in canvas rent, okay? Or image capture. Let's try this. Let's go to render. So wait for this to come up. You want to do a local render. If you do a cloud render, it's going to save online. If you do a local render, it's going to save on your computer. Now, you want the quality to be a final render because all your drawings are actually, you want them to be as high quality as possible. And you want it to be excellent quality. So that way you can actually adjust the size of it in your folio and it retains its, its um, retains its shape and we're just going to do um, a JPEG exposure native just leave it your custom aspects ratio or oh. let's go landscape or you could even pick the different size that you want. but we're just going to say landscape okay now let's click on render here now in the corner you can see that it's actually started to do its local. It says once the rendering is complete, a thumbnail in the rendering gallery gallery will, will pop up here so that way you can that you you can view it. Okay. And you can see down here that this image is starting to render. Now it takes a little bit of time because what it's doing is it's taking this model, okay, and it's trying to you know represent it in as high quality as possible. Now what you want to do depending on the different features of your product. And if you look at the um, 
images that I've got here for my product that I produced. Okay, I had a few different features. Like these are small speakers. I had this um, button panel on the top that I wanted to show. So I'm showing my speakers or my speaker, sorry, from multiple different angles. And what you're trying to do is show off the features of that particular product. Okay, so you position it in whatever way you want. Okay, whatever way you're comfortable with or specifically whatever it is that you want to show. Okay, and then you can actually do multiple renders. So again, I'm using the same rendering um, features or the same rendering settings. I'm just gonna click on render and leave it there and I'm gonna have a second render that's going to be working as well. Okay, so you can see that there's these progress bars here. You're going to have to take a little bit of time to wait for those images to render, okay? So we're just going to leave that there and um, we'll wait for that to, to render and then we can continue from that particular point. Again, I realize this is taking a little bit of time, so we're just going to wait for that to render up. And what I'll do is I'll just try to talk you through, you know, what it is that you're trying to do here. So again, if you look at the drawings that have been produced, and this is something that hopefully you guys have been working over the holidays on, you take a really basic sketch or idea, we turn it into a render or something that's a little bit more concrete, and then we'll use the dimension drawings to get a better understanding excuse me for what it is that we want to create and then you create it in in CAD and as you can see once you start getting the hang of CAD you can actually produce that model quite easily and as you've also seen through this tutorial once you've decided on your aesthetic or your color scheme even that is quite easy to produce in the in the CAD software as well. The, the, the longest part of this process is actually waiting for your renders to complete because your computer is processing those images um, you know, to quite a high level. So that's the, the thing that you're waiting for the longest. But what it does give you in the end are these images okay, of an object that while it doesn't look super realistic, it still looks realistic enough for us to say, or for our brain to say, oh, I understand what it is that we're making now. And if you've got the chance at home to download more of those textures that, that we were using on the left-hand side, well, that gives you the chance to actually produce something that is even more realistic. So, for example, if you had your speakers and you had like a matte finish on the outside of your speaker and the rest of your speaker was gloss or whatever it might be, then you can create it, you know, more realistically but for all intents and purposes the way that we're doing it now gives us you know a realistic enough image so that we can say okay I understand specifically what it is that I'm making and I also understand what it's going to look like when it's finished okay so you're going to need those images in your folio and hopefully that helps you produce them um, now and the last thing that we're going to do once our renders finish are these um, engineering drawings. So again, because you've already created this model in the computer system or in the CAD system, we don't have to produce it again. All we're going to do is use that same CAD model, that same drawing that we imported into our render. Okay, we're going to use that again um, to, to create this um, drawing here, the isometric drawing. Excuse me. And then to create this orthogonal projection. And with the orthogonal projection, what we're trying to do is show all the essential dimensions for our for our um, design. So that if someone was to make it, they could say, okay, I specifically know how I would make this product and they can do it as accurately as possible. So we'll see how these 
Brenda's are coming along. So the first one seems to be nearly done, which is good. I might even see if I can cancel this second one, because we don't really need it. It's just to show you. We don't, okay, I can't cancel it. Okay. I'll just wait for this first one to finish. Hopefully finish it soon. Let me done. Okay, so we finally got this render finished, and let's have a look at it. Let's see how it is. Okay, so if we look into the render gallery, it's slowly coming up, which is exactly what we want. Now again, see, this is a really basic drawing, okay, and because we've used that basic color, um, it, looks, it looks fairly basic, but it's done to a very high quality. So what you would do then, We don't want to do another render, we just want to download that. So you will download it, you would save it wherever you wanted to, so that way you could take those images and put them into your folio once they were done. And you would do, again, like I said, multiple images. You wouldn't just do one, you would do, you know, maybe five or six, and then once you had those five or six, then you would pick the ones that you think, um, the ones that you think best suited your design so that it would be shown in your in your folio as effectively as possible. Now, so that's rendering. If you you know go through the steps, it's quite simple, and it's something that you guys should be able to pick up fairly easily. The last thing that we're going to go through are our drawings, and any time we're you know we're taking we're taking our drawing from a design that we've already done. So we're going to click on here from design, and that will take us to this create a drawing section. Now what we want to do is create our template from scratch. We're just going to do a standard ISO drawing. So don't change any of these sections here. Okay, as long as it's in A3 and it's in millimeters, we're good to go. So just press OK and it will take us to this page here now. Just wait for it to load up. Alrighty. Now, as soon as I've come into this drawing here, what it's done is it's given me my name because I'm the one that created this particular shape. It gives me the date and it gives me the title, which is the 
title that you give to your project when you um, save it. Now, you can also see that it's given me a front view of my drawing, okay? So if I just, if we think about the orthogonal projections that we've already done, we have our front view that we place here, we have our top view that we place here, and we have our side view that we're going to place here, then we will normally have a small isometric view that we'll place there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this drawing, straight away I'm gonna place it. Actually, let's maybe, do we wanna make it bigger? Let's make it full scale, one to one. That way we might not even use the isometric. So we might, if you can fit a one to one, place it like that. And then if you look at the edges, Okay, what it, or if we look at the style of our drawing, what we've got is the visible and hidden edges. What we want is something that is a complete skeleton. So we'll let go of that, press enter, and then here you go, you've just got your skeleton. And this is the front view of your drawing. What we want to do now is add our top view and our side view to that drawing. So we've got our basic view, and if we come here to drawing views, we want to move to something called a projected view. Okay, so this is our base view, and we're going to project from this drawing here. Okay, what we've got here is the bottom view, a side view. and the top view. So I'm going to move this up. I'm going to get rid of that. So like I said, I want my Actually, going to get rid of this drawing too. I want my top view. That's my top view there. Great. Now, I know it's my top view because if I was looking at this particular object from the top, I wouldn't be able to see this, this shape in the bottom. And that tells me there with these hidden lines, these dotted lines, that that is something that I would have to look through the surface to actually see this particular section is that's what I want. But what I need to do is then just bring that above. So cool, now I've got my three drawing views that I want to work with. I've got my front view, I've got my top view, and I've got my side view, which is perfect. Now, the next thing that you might want to do once you've got this basic drawing is actually add text to it. So I haven't added text to mine. It's not necessarily essential. If you understand isometric drawings, you'll be able to look at this and say, that's the top, that's one side, that's the other. But if you want to, you can actually show that as well. So that's up to you. So I'm just going to go text, add text here. And let's just say, um, Front view. I'm going to make this smaller. Press enter. Yeah. Take that. If you want to bold it or anything like that, you can too. We're just going to leave it as is. I just want to move it, that's all I want to do. That's better. I've got my front view there. Now, if I go back into it and I press enter, it's not working. Good, all right, let's just leave that there. And then, say you wanted to add another text, you could add another one here. That says side. I want it to be again like the other one. 
I want it to be in line with that first drawing I did, and you can see it's in line because there's this line that goes all the way across the two drawings. I'm going to leave that one there. And the last one I'm going to do is obviously my top view. Again, this isn't an essential part of the drawing, but it just does make it look professional. So now I've got my drawings and I've got the different views that they're in. The last thing that I want to do is to put the dimensions into this particular drawing. So if I come up here to dimensions and I click on this, or dimensions, then I can start actually playing around with the dimensions. So I'm going to zoom in and it's always easy to work from initially your most basic view. So if I this is my front view, this is the most basic view that I'm going to work from. And the first thing that anybody's going to want to know about my drawing, okay, is what's its length. Okay, so I'm just going to go from this part here and then click on this part here. And if you just pull down, it actually gives you like an indentation. Okay, so I'm going to click on that and it gives me that 150 straight away. And the second thing I'm going to want to know is what's its height. Okay, so I'm going to click on that part there, click on that part there, indent it out, great, it tells me that it's 50 as well. Okay, now the top view looks like the front view, but this view here is actually all over here, and this drawing gives me its depth. So what I want to do, or its thickness, is find out in this view here, how thick is it, and it's 50 millimeters as well. Okay, if I was looking at it like that. Now, um, what I want to show as well are these circular parts over here, okay? So actually, before I do that, let's just focus on, on this section here. So I don't want to clog up this drawing too much. So what I'm going to do straight away is I'm going to use my top drawing here to show the width of that indented section. Okay, and then I can add these more accurate measurements. into my drawing. So click on dimension again. This should be five. Yep, there we go. It's a radius of five millimeters. I want to show that. And then I, yeah, that's better. I just want it to be tidy, so I'm, that's not what I wanted. Let's delete that. Let's try that again. Good. Just one more time. That'll do. All right. So now if I look at these two drawings, I can see how wide this particular feature is through here. I can see how high the main part of it, 15 millimeters. And I can also see that shape or that radius that I've used, which is five millimeters, which also tells the designer, okay, it's 15 plus five. So they know it's a 20 millimeter height. Okay. Um, if you wanted to be even more specific, you could technically get your dimensioning section, go from the top here to the bottom here, and you could do a radius of 20 as well if you want, like uh, put that dimension there too, but I don't want it to be too cluttered, so I'm going to leave it like that. The next thing that people are going to want to know is what is the dimension or the radius of this um, speaker that I'm using. So if I just click on dimension and I click onto that circle, it will give me the radius. And then once I do one click, I can actually start playing around 
with where I want to place that radius. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it just right there in the middle. Okay. Now that if you want to be really pedantic, that isn't centered properly. So let me try that again. Click on that. There we go. Maybe I'll just do it off center so that way it looks tight. Yeah, let's do it like that. Okay, so they can see that the radius of that circle is um, 23.9. The next thing you want to show are the radiuses here. So that's a radius of 20. And then if I wanted to do a radius of this as well, you're showing that that's also a radius of 20. Now, they already know from these drawings here the height and the length, or the sorry, the height and the depth of your of your model. So you don't need to do those again. This drawing here is specifically showing the different radiuses and diameters of all these circular components of your project. So that we can leave that there, and that is fine. The last thing that we need to show is the um, the depth of the speaker. So what I'm going to do to this drawing, maybe I'll do it on the outside. So I'm going to come to the outside now. I'm going to get my dimensioning tool. Okay. It's wrong. Make sure that you're really accurate with this. So I'm going to try to get it in that corner there. And get it in that corner there. And then we're going to project it out. So now I know that height is 43.91 and then rather than clotting up the drawing what I want to show is also that there's a little radius on here too so I'm going to click on that and now they know that my circle or that extrusion has a radius of 2 as well okay and the last thing that I need to show is the thickness of that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here click there click there and I can now show that there's a radius of two out there as well. Okay. And then I also have to do it on this side just to show that they are equal. And that should be fine. They will know that it's symmetrical. So, what we've got now, let me just try to center that, is a drawing of our front view, our top view, and our side view, okay, that is as accurate as possible. It's got all these dimensions here, and if you then wanted to, you can then go to drawing view and show a base view, okay, or a projected view, sorry. So let's say I did this and I wanted to do it in 3D. When I project I can actually project something in 3D so I want that view it gives you a few different views but let's say I want that view like that okay I want to get it and like I can then move it into the top corner here we're not going to dimension this isometric view okay now let's say I wanted to play around with it let's say I made it I'm gonna leave it one but what I want it to be rather than you know, all these dimension drawings, I want it to be something that looks solid. Okay, so I've got that, and it now looks like a solid object, but what I'm gonna have to do is then play around with everything else so that it fits. And one other thing that you're trying to do when you're doing your projections, you're trying to get, and there's actually a very accurate way that we can do this. If we've got a projection from here, we're projecting it, so that's a 90.7. We want to get now as accurately as possible. Oops. 
90.7 there as well. So that's actually 71. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this in a bit more. Until I can get that to 71 roughly as well. So it's 70, so if I just was to nudge it out a little bit. Too far. So about there, then we've got roughly the same distance between here as we do between there. Okay. Now, that's what we want. I'm just going to bring this down a little bit more as well. Now that is your orthogonal projection for this drawing that you've just done. Okay, and again, it doesn't require you to do anything, like to create anything new. All it's getting you to do is to use the drawing that we've made already and use that to get the dimensions and all that kind of stuff. So what you're going to do, get that drawing, file, Break it. We want to export it to a PDF. So I click on that. All sheets. Okay. Press OK. You'll save it onto wherever you want. I'm just going to save it as my desktop. I'm just going to call it demo isometric drawing. Sorry, it's orthogonal projection, not isometric. Orthogonal. Projection. Okay, or save it. You save it wherever you wherever you're going to remember. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my speaker. I'm going to go back into drawing, drawing from design, and I want to create a new drawing now. Okay, so this one here. Okay, this one here. Get rid of it, we don't need that anymore. Don't save. Okay, so we want to do an isometric drawing now, and our isometric is this um, drawing here where all the where the, the drawing is in uh, 3D, but all the angles of that drawing are at 45 degrees. That's what we call an isometric drawing. This is more specifically what it is. Okay. So, what we're going to do is go back to Fusion, and we're going to do a base view. Okay, so we've got that, and let's just say we wanted to do one projection, which is going to be the isometric. Now, which one do we want to use? This is not what I want, actually. Let me delete that. Let's go drawing views. Detailed views, what I want to show. Base view, all right, let's just do the base view to begin with. Now. If I get this drawing, see how it's right now, the orientation is to the front. We want our orientation to come, so that's an isometric drawing, okay? So if we play around with that, that's a southwest. All these are just the direction that it's pointing in. We can play around with the kind of isometric drawing that we want to represent, okay? So let's just say that we picked this one. Oh, no, let's make it a little bit different from the other one. Let's say we use this one here. And look at the scale. We want the scale to be as large as possible for this drawing. So let's just make it 2 to 1. That means 2 to 1 means double. That's a bit too big. So let's just keep it then at 1 to 1. 
which is a bit smaller, but that's fine. Now, what I want to do here is put it in the middle. Okay, and you'll see, even though this isn't a cube, um, or it's a rectangular shape, that this line here and this line here coming from this point are both projecting at 45 degrees. So I know that that is specifically an isometric drawing. Now I've done a really basic drawing here, so there's not a whole lot of features to show. But what you want to do is show all the features for your product, okay? And you can play around with specifically what you want to show. Now it's up to you how many features you want to show of your product, okay? And I mean that because if you've got something that's really intricate, you might have something that just has a whole bunch of lines, okay? A whole bunch of lines and it doesn't actually look very useful. So I'm going to go with this view here because I think that that shows all the different components of this drawing. And because it's a little bit small, 2 to 1 or doubling the size is to makes the image too large. Okay, so let's just try making it one and a half times the size of the object. So 1.5 is to 1. So it makes it one and a half times larger than it normally would be. And that is like fits perfectly on this page. Okay, and that is an isometric drawing. It's as simple as that. So what I want you to do here, once you've got that and you're happy with that, is you go output, all sheets, press OK. It will take you to this section again. I'm just going to draw do it on the desktop to show you. I'm going to call it demo isometric drawing. Press save. And you've got that as well. Now if I go out of this to where I've saved my stuff, if I open my demo orthogonal projection, I've now got that picture. When it loads. Well, now I've got that picture that I can use. Okay. And then if I was to open the demo isometric, I've got that second picture that I can use as well now to represent my drawing. Okay. When it loads. And if I come back into Fusion, okay, you also have your renders that you can use as well. So if I open my, I've actually got this second render that I can use now as well. I might as well show you, okay. Now, you might want to zoom in more, but this is just again just to show you what it looks like. Okay, but we've got two renders that we can download and use, as well as our two different drawing views as well. Okay, so we've got our isometric there as well. Now, all those four drawings, five, six, however you end up using, I'd suggest you use at least three different rendered drawings. Okay, these can all be used, or they should all be used in your folio. So that's my isometric now as a PDF. Okay, if I wanted to put it into my folio as easily as possible, you should be able to then save it as a JPEG, I'm pretty sure. No, you have to save it as a PDF, that's fine. I should be able to export as a JPEG though. It doesn't matter, you should be able to import it anyway. So you've got your um, isometric, you've got your orthogonal projection that you can use. And then once you download your renders, okay, just by pressing the download button, you've got your renders that you can then use too, okay? So if I was to save that on my desktop as well, save that one, open this one, save it on my desktop as well just to show you. I then have all the drawings that I want to do, or that I want to put into my folio at my disposal. That's my first render. It's my second render, it shows a little bit more. And again, you can crop them how you want. Okay, but you can start using these techniques or you should be using these techniques to assist you in the communication skills of your design. Okay, so I hope that this tutorial has allowed you to understand at a deeper level 
how we can use Fusion 360 to you know, produce something that looks as realistic as possible, how we can take a design that we've made in Fusion, turn it into a render to make it more photorealistic um, for us to comprehend, and then how we can take that render as well, or take that model as well, and turn it into the engineering drawings that we need for our project. So um, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow specifically about this project, but hopefully this is a tutorial that you can continue referring back to so that you can get all these elements of your folio and of your project completed. Okay, thank you so much guys. Have a great afternoon.